بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد بإذن الله تعالى today we're going to the tenth sitting so مجلس العاشر from the daily sittings in Ramadan مشيق صالح الوطيمين رحم الله so continuing today it will be on في أداب السيام والواجبة in uh, the etiquettes of uh, the obligatory fasting, which is in Ramadan. So the Sheikh is going to go into uh, this chapter, inshallah, and uh, we begin with the introduction. So the Sheikh begins with Bismillah. He says, Alhamdulillah, uh, Alhamdulillah, Lazi Arshada Al Khalqa Il Akmil Al Adab. So he begins with here. That all praise belongs to Allah, the one who guided the creation to the complete to complete etiquette. Yeah. فَتَحَ لَهُمْ مِنَ الْحَزَائِنِ رَحْمَتِهِ وَجُودِهِ كُلَّ بَعْضِ أَنَارَ بِصَائِرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَأَدْرَكُ الْحَقَائِكَ وَتَلَبُ الثَّوَابِ so here, the Sheikh, he goes on to mention that um, Allah opened for them, meaning the, belie uh, the believers, the doors, um, the, the treasures of his mercy. So he opened for them the doors of the treasures of his mercy and his generosity. Yeah. So he opened all the doors for, for all the believers. And then he mentioned that he illuminated the sight of the believer, uh, believers, so that they could understand, uh, they could understand the realities, and then they could uh, seek the uh, reward from Allah. And uh, he, um, and uh, Allah also. Just one second. Let's just skip back here. So let's get that back. Sixty. We were on sixty. Let me just get that page. So it's just after this. One second. There. So here we were saying that, and he has uh, blinded the uh, sight of the those who turn away from his obedience. So we go up to there. So then the, the sheikh mentions. Uh, so so they not. وَأَعْمَى بَصَائِرَ الْمُؤْرِدِينَ عَنْ طَاعَتِهِ فَصَارَ بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ نُورٍ Nurihi uh, hijab. So he uh, blinded uh, the sights or the insights of the uh, those who um, oppose, yeah, uh, those who turn away uh, uh, from his obedience. Uh, he he placed that, may uh, blinded them to the insight. As a result, he put a barrier between them and his light, meaning the light of Allah. And the barrier was hijab. Hada, hada ulaika bi fadlihi wa rahmatihi wa adalla al akhirin bi adlihi wa hikmatihi. So he guided those, meaning the believers, out of his uh, bounty uh, and his mercy, and he misguided the, the others, meaning the disbelievers, with his uh, uh, justice and with his wisdom. Inna fi dhalika li dhikra li ul al bab. So indeed, there is a, indeed there is a, this indeed a reminder for the people of understanding. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahul mulk lahul mulk lahul lahu al mulk al adid al wahab. Wa ashhadu an Muhammadan Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu al mabuuthu. بأجل الإبادات وأكمل الآداب صلى الله عليه وعلى جميع 
آله آله والأصحاب وعلى التابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم يوم المعاب وصل وسلم تسليما. So here uh, the sh- uh, the Sheikh mentions uh, and I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone and He has no partners. Uh, to Him uh, belongs the kingdom and uh, He is the Almighty uh, and the All Giver and Bestower. And I bear witness that Muhammad uh, is His slave and His messenger that He sent. Um, so the one who is sent with the most precious acts of worship and perfect etiquettes peace of Allah be upon him his family members and his companions and whoever follows their footsteps in the best manners till the day of judgment till the day of judgment yeah, resurrection sorry so here now the sheikh after the introduction he mentions uh, ikhwani so my brothers اعلموا ان ان للصيام ادابا كثيره لا يتم لا يتم الا بها ولا يكمل الا بالقيام بها وهي على قسمين اداب واجبه لا بد للصائم من مراءاتها والمحافظه عليها واداب مستحبه ينبغي ان يراعيها ويحافظ عليها so here, um, the Sheikh, let me just get that, he mentions, Bismillah. So here the Sheikh, he mentions that, uh, no, that for, for, the, for the fasting, or it has its etiquettes, which are many, and they're not completed, except if, if they are completed, by uh, except by um, you know um, by uh, uh, applying them by establishing uh, with them uh, by establishing them so these etiquettes that are many uh, they are not completed except by establishing uh, the fast is not completed except by uh, establishing these um, these um, Etiquettes, and there are two types. The first one are the obligatory uh, forms of etiquettes. That uh, there is, a, uh, it's a must for the one who's fasting that he uh, complies with these uh, uh, with these uh, etiquettes, and that he uh, safeguards them and preserves these uh, preserves them. And then the second type, which are uh, you know the uh, liked, uh, you know mustahabba. They are not wajib, uh, but they are, uh, you know, recommended to do. And it's uh, a person should, uh, you know, preserve these and uh, uh, implement these. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that. So yeah, they uh, observe, comply, and preserve these. So, فمن الآداب الواجبة أن يكون السائم بما أوجب الله عليه من الإبادات القولية والفعلية من أحمها الصلاة المفروضة التي هي أكد أركان الإسلام بعد شهادتين. So here the Sheikh mentions um, from among the obligatory etiquettes that uh, you have to establish. Uh, a person who's fasting has to establish uh, are the ones that Allah has made obligatory, wajib upon his slaves that are from speech, acts of uh, ibadah, which are from speech or from actions, and from the most important of them is the prayer, the five daily prayers that are uh, obligated upon uh, all Muslims, uh, and the which are uh, on all. And the most important, yeah. So it's the most important pillars of Islam. Uh, after the two shahadas, so after the, the shahadatain, the tawheed, the main important, uh, the most important act of worship is the prayer. فَتَجِبُ مُرَاعَاتُهَا بِالْمُحَافَظَةِ 
that he so he's obligatory to comply uh, with the, them and uh, you know carry out those actions and to preserve them. عليها والقيام بأركانها وواجباتها وشروطها and that we uh, comply and we you know uh, fulfill uh, the pillars and the obligations and the conditions of salah. فيؤديها في وقتها مع الجماع في المساجد. So the person he needs to um, he needs to carry out these uh, salahs in the in its in their times uh, in jama in congregation in the masajid for the men while for the women the best place is the homes yeah but if they wish they can go to the masjid fa inna dhalika min at-taqwa allati min ajliha shuri'a siyam wa furida ala al ummah and in the, because in the uh, is piety which is the which, which uh, due to the uh, Fasting was um, obligated upon the nation, yeah, for upon the Muslim nation to uh, gain taqwa. Wa idaatu sala munafin li taqwa wa mujibun li aquba li aquba. So then the Sheikh says that uh, wasting away uh, or of uh, this obligation of uh, of prayer or losing it, uh, you know, of sala. So you're not giving no importance to salah, yeah, and uh, to waste it away, and is the is the contradictory to taqwa, and it is oblig it obligates uh, the punishment. So imagine a person he keeping all the fast, and many of the Muslims do, uh, they give more importance to fast in Ramadan, but yet at the same time they're not praying, which is commanded first as all. Well. So. Uh, so here the the Sheikh mentions قال الله تعالى ف ف فخلف من بعدهم خلف أضاء الصلاة واتبع الشحوات فسوف يلقون غي إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل صالحا فأولئك يدخلون يدخلون الجنة ولا يظلمون شيئا. So that's Surah Maryam and uh, verse fifty nine and sixty. So if you get that on uh, the translation, then there has succeeded them a, 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 a posterity, posterity who have given up a salah, the prayers, yeah, to be lost, either by not offering them or by uh, not offering them perfectly or by not offering them in the proper time, fixed times, and have followed loss, meaning the desires. So they will be thrown in hell, subhanAllah, you know. Uh, evil destination except those who repent and believe in the oneness of Allah and, his, and believe in his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his and, uh, and work righteousness do righteous deeds such will enter paradise and they will not be wronged in anything so alhamdulillah so that it shows also that if we were in a situation where we were delaying the prayers that we should now make Tawbah, rectify our, our deeds ourselves so that we are uh, making uh, the salaw, salawat on the times. So then the Shaykh mentions, وَمِنَ الصَّائِمِينَ مَنْ يَتَحَاوَنُوا بِالصَّلَاةِ الْجَمَاءَ مَعَا وَجُوبِهَا عَلَيْهِ So then the Shaykh mentions that uh, from, from, from the uh, fasting people are those who neg neglect the salah the uh, jama' so in congregation the praying in congregation while it's obligatory upon them meaning the men is obligatory upon them it's not obligatory upon the women to fast uh, the pray in the masajid but in jama' in congregation but it is upon the men وَقَدْ أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا فِي كِتَابِهِ فَقَالَ وَإِذْ كُنْتَ فِيهِمْ فَأَقَمْتَ لَهُمُ الصَّلَاةَ فَتَقُمْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ مَعَكَ وَلْيَأْخُذُوا أَصْلِحَتُهُمْ فَإِذَا سَجَدُوا يَعْنِي أَتَمُّوا أَصْلَاتَهُمْ فَلْيَكُونُوا مِنْ وَرَائِكُمْ وَلْتَعْتِي طَائِفَةٌ أُخْرَى لَمْ يُسَلُّوا فَلْيُسَلُّوا مَعَكَ 
وليأخذوا حذرهم وأسلحتهم. So that's Surah Nisa verse 106. So here the Sheikh mentions that um, and then Allah indeed commanded uh, with with this in his book uh, where he said let's get the ayah here where he said that and when you O messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so Allah is addressing Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are among them and lead them in a salah so when the Prophet used to leave the believers in salah one party of them stand up in salah meaning with, with you taking their arms with them so this is the time of battle so even in jihad the command was to pray one party pray and one way so uh, let one party of them stand up in salah with you taking their arms with them meaning their weapons with them and when they finish their pro uh, prostrations, meaning when they finish their prayer, and there's a specific a specific type of prayer, yeah, that is uh, performed, uh, and there's a specific specific type of uh, prayer that is performed in um, in uh, battle, yeah. So uh, when they've completed their prayer, for the, the second party to continue, yeah. Let them then take their positions in the rear and let the the other party come up which have not yet prayed and let them pray with you all taking all the precautions and bearing arms. Those who disbelieve wish if you were negligent of your arms and you your baggage to attack you in a single rush. But there is no sin on you if you put away your arms because of the inconvenience of rain or because you are ill. But take every precaution for yourselves. Worry, Allah has prepared a humiliating torment for the disbelievers. So look at that, subhanAllah. Even in the case of war, there is a specific type of prayer so that you're not excused from that, from the obligation of jama'ah, of congregation. That even if you have to carry your weapons, you carry your weapons and pray, and uh, you split the people up into two groups, where one to keep in a uh, you know, lookout, and then the other party takes their place. So that doesn't excuse you from the jama'ah. So, so how about when you are not in war? So we did that. And then we said, فَأَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِالسَّلَاةِ مَعَ الْجَمَاءِ فِي حَالِ الْقِتَالِ وَالْخَوْفِ So here the Shaykh mentions exactly that point, that Allah has commanded uh, the prayer in congregation, whether, uh, whether that be in uh, uh, the time of uh, you know fighting and fear, so so wal amn awla. So exactly the same point that whether so Allah has commanded that in the fight, a time of fighting and war and fear. So in the, in the time of uh, you know of ease and uh, security and uh, is even more you know even more so of a command upon the people to establish their um, congregational prayers. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رجل أعمى قال يا رسول الله ليس لي قائد يقودوني إلى المسجد فرخص له. So then here the, in uh, the Sahih Hadith on uh, the authority of uh, Abu Huraira, the great companion, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned that a man that, that a man that was blind came. And he said to the Messenger of Allah, I do not have a guide, someone to guide me, to lead me to the masjid, because he's blind. So the Prophet ﷺ permitted him uh, to pray at home. Yeah. But then, فَلَمَّا وَلَّا وَدَعَهُ وَقَالَ هَلْ تَسْمَعَ النِّدَاءَ بِالسَّلَاءَ قَالَ نَعَمْ قَالَ فَأَجِبْ So that is Rawahu Muslim. So then, but then the Prophet ﷺ, when the man turned away, he, uh, the Prophet ﷺ called him and he said, do you hear the call, meaning the adhan, do you hear the call for the salah? So the man said, yeah, yes I do. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, so answer it, meaning answer the call. So even he was blind, he was not excused from that. So that is um, uh, mentioned in uh, Sahih Muslim. 
So it's an authentic hadith. فَلَمْ يُرَخِّسْ لَهُ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم فِي تَرْكِ الْجَمَاعَةِ مَا أَنَّهُ رَجُلٌ أَعْمَى وَلَيْسَ لَهُ قَائِدٌ So the Shaykh, he mentioned the same point that the Prophet did not, صلى الله عليه وسلم did not permit him to leave the congregational prayer even though he was blind and he didn't have someone to guide him. So then uh, some of the believers would have helped him to come to the masjid so that he can establish the prayer. So then the Shaykh mentions وَتَارِكُ الْجَمَاعَةِ مع إضاءته الواجب الواجب قد حرم نفسه خير كثيرا من مضاعفة الحسنات فإن الصلاة الجماعة مضاعفة كما في صحيحين من حديث ابن عمر ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما. so we don't mention the hadith. so the sheikh mentions that the one who lead the congregation prayer uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, is wasting uh, uh, is losing out and wasting a wajib or obligation uh, and he's uh, forbidden made forbidden for himself a lot of good a lot of good deeds because uh, the, the good deeds are uh, multiplied for the prayer in congregation and indeed he's mentioned in that in regards to the congregation prayer that is multiplied as is mentioned in the uh, hadith that is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari Muslim from the hadith of the son of Omar yeah, uh, uh, may Allah be pleased with them both that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned Salatul Jama'a Tafdalu Ala Salatul Fadli Bi Sab'i Wa Ishreena Daraja so the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that the congregational prayer the congregational prayer is better yeah, that the congregational prayer is 20, 27 degrees more excellent than the prayer uh, of a single person. So that is Bukhari and Muslim. 27 times more better. وَفَوَّتَ الْمَصَالِحَ الْإِجْتِمَاعِيَّةِ الَّتِي تَحْصُلُ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ بِإِجْتِمَاعِهِمْ عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ مِنْ غَرْسِ الْمَحَبَّةِ وَالْأُلْفَةِ وَتَعْلِيمَ الْجَاهِلِ وَمُصَاعَدَةِ الْمَحَبَّةِ Muhtaji wa ghairi dhalik. So uh, then uh, the Sheikh he mentions that uh, you know this uh, also is uh, he the person he misses out on uh, you know rectifying or rectification uh, of the uh, society yeah of the community. Uh, so the benefits of sorry the benefits of the community benefiting the community. Uh, which are attained for the Muslim uh, by uh, their gathering uh, for the prayer and you know implanting uh, that love and that uh, brotherhood uh, and, uh, and uh, teaching uh, the ignorant people and aiding the one who needs who has needs and other than that so there's some great benefits um, of establishing the uh, the congregational prayer is that community uh, benefits that uh, are established as well. وَبِتَرْكِ الْجَمَاعَةِ يُعَرِّدُ نَفْسَهُ لِلْأَقُوبَةِ وَمُشَابَحَةِ وَمُشَابَحَةِ الْمُنَافِقِينَ So by leaving the obligation of uh, this, uh, this uh, congregational prayer, uh, the person he risks uh, you know, for himself uh, you know, punishment uh, and being, being, uh, you know, uh, a resemblance to the uh, hypocrites. Because Fafi Asahihain and Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala. So in the, in the Sahih Bukhari Muslim uh, hadith of Abu Huraira, uh, it mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu said, Athqulu. Uh, أثقل السلا سلوات على المنافقين صلاة الإشاء وصلاة الفجر ولو يعلمون ما فيهما لعاتوهما ولو حبوا ولقد حممت أن أعمر بالصلاة ف ف فتقام ثم أعمر رجلا فيصلي بالناس ثم أم أم طلق مائي بِرِجَالٍ مَعْهُمْ هِزَمٌ مِنْ 
حطب إلى قوم قوم لا يشهدون الصلاة فأخرق علي فأخرق عليهم بيوتهم بالنار. So here is a severe warning about this where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentions that um, in regards to this uh, being you know an indication that this uh, obligation uh, you know uh, praying congregation is an obligation that uh, the Prophet صلى mentioned in the, the two Sahih uh, um, they collected in the two Sahih books Sahih Bukhari Muslim that the heaviest prayer upon the hypocrites are the two prayers the prayer of Isha and Fajr because it's late and the early prayer yeah and um, and if the people were to know what is in them you know of benefit of the reward they would have come to them meaning the Fajr and the uh, Isha prayer even if they were to crawl yeah even if they were to crawl to the masjid to come to these they would have crawled to the masjid to attend these two salahs in jama in congregation al fajr fajr and isha and then the prophet sallallahu mentioned here and this shows uh, i indeed wanted to command the prayer to be established on this particular occasion and then command someone to lead the prayer meaning that the prophet sallallahu wouldn't lead the prayer he'd command someone else to lead the prayer and then i would proceed out with a group of men who will carry with them wood to the house uh, houses of those who who do not observe the prayer in congregation in order to put their houses on fire subhanallah what a great warning that even the prophet sallallahu wanted to do that yeah so uh, so that is a wake up call for us who can't obviously there are exceptions for a person who's got um, an exception a shari exception uh, for example he's ill maybe there's a short time and he can't but regularly he should make a habit of attending uh, the prayer uh, in congregation wa fi sahih muslim an ibn masud radiyallahu anhu qala man sarrahu an yalqa yalqa allah ghadan musliman fal yuhafid ala haula'i salawat haythu yunada bihin fa inna allah shara'a li nabiyikum sunan al huda wa inna hunna min sunan al huda qala wa laqad ra'ayt ra'ayt رأيتنا وما يتخلف عنها إلا منافق معلوم معلوم النفاق ولقد كان الرجل يؤتى به يحا يحادى يحادى نعم يحادى بين بين رجلين بين الرجلين حتى يقام في الصف. Uh, so here uh, is mentioned that uh, Ibn Mas'ud in the Sahih Muslim from Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, uh, that he said, um, whoever, he said, well, whoever is pleased to meet with his Lord, Allah, uh, where they are being called, yeah, they can call for the Salah, for well your Lord has prescribed for you, your messenger, paths of guidance, and these prayers are indeed from the paths of guidance. Then he said, indeed, I have seen us, meaning he meant the companions, yeah, and none fails to attend it meaning in the prayer in congregation except a hypocrite who is known with uh, hypocrisy then he mentioned indeed two men who carry a person who is who is ill yeah who is disabled who is unable yeah uh, to uh, attend the masjid, masjid by himself the two people carry him between them and he would walk him to the row uh, so th- that's that's what uh, one of the companions would do. The two men would carry, and they would hold on to his arms, and he'd carry him to walk to the row. Subhanallah. And that's uh, in the time of the companions. And what excuse do we have uh, not to attend the com- uh, you know congregation prayers? Then, um, then, uh, then the sheikh he mentioned, "Amin al-Sa'imin man." يَتَجَاوَزُ بِالْعَمْرِ فَيَنَامُ عَنَ السَّلَاةِ فِي وَقْتِهَا So then the Shaykh mentions and from the fa- those who are fasting are those who exceed the limit in regard to fasting. So what do they do? They sleep. Uh, sorry, in regards to praying. They're fasting but when it comes to the time of prayer they're sleeping in the time of prayer. وَهَذَا مِنْ أَعْظَمَ الْمُنْكَرَاتِ 
وأشد الإذاعة للصلوات حتى قال قال كثير من العلماء حتى كثير من العلماء حتى قال كثير من العلماء إن إن من أخر الصلاة عن وقتها بدون عذر شرعي لم لم تقبل لم تقبل وإن صلى مئة مرة لقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد رأو مسلم so then the sheikh mentions that this is from the great is of uh, you know detestable actions uh, and uh, in, is in the, the almost uh, severity in loss uh, for the uh, for the prayers uh, you know uh, where where even some of the scholars have said that one whoever delays so not even just you know missing the prayer but delaying the prayer from his time without a uh, a genuine uh, reason in the, that is uh, from the reasons in the, in the uh, Sharia in the legislation of Allah, it's not that the salah will not be accepted from him, even if you were to pray pray a hundred times, he would not be accepted from him, and that is according to the use of uh, uh, for that a proof from uh, according to the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever does an action. That is not according to our 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 action, meaning our religion, then it is rejected. Meaning, whoever does an action that is opposes the action of the Prophet Sallallahu then it's rejected. And that is narrated uh, in Sahih uh, Muslim. So here, والسلام بعد وقتها ليس عليه أمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فتكون مردودة غير مقبولة. So the Sheikh says that the prayer. Being prayed after its time is not on the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. So it's what? So it is rejected and it's not accepted. So so that is from the adequacy of uh, prayer, uh, of uh, the fasting. It's a prayer in jama' and in prayer on time. وَمِنَ الْآدَابِ الْوَاجِبَ أَنْ يَجْتَنِبَ الصَّائِمْ جَمِيعًا مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنَ الْأَقْوَالِ وَالْأَفْعَالِ فَيَجْتَنِبُ الْكَذِبَ وَهُوَ الْإِخْبَارِ بِخَلَافِ الْوَاقِعِ So he said, the Sheikh mentions, and from also from uh, the, the obligatory etiquettes of a fasting person is to stay away, the fasting person to stay away from everything that Allah has forbidden him from, made haram for him. And the Prophet ﷺ is informed us about the haram from speech and actions. So he stays away from uh, lying. And this is a lying is informing about something which is uh, opposite to the reality. So you 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 inform someone or you say something uh, that is contrary to the reality. So lying, we all know what a lying is. وَأَعْذَمُهُ الْكَذِبُ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كَأَنْ يَنْصُبَ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَوْ إِلَى رَسُولِهِ تَحْلِيلَ الْحَرَامِ أَوْ تَحْرِيمَ الْحَلَالِ Bila ilm. So, and the greatest form of lying is to lie upon Allah and His Messenger. So, where you attribute to Allah something or to the Prophet Sallallahu where you whereby you make uh, you make something haram halal, or that you make something haram halal, yeah, without knowledge. So that is a Really important thing that we don't speak about the religion of Allah without uh, without knowledge, where you can fall into that. And Allah the Most High, قال الله تعالى ولا تقولوا لما تسف ألسنتكم ولا تقولوا لما ولا تقولوا لما تسف تسف One second, Subhanallah. There's an issue with this uh, with this uh, PDF today. So let me just get that. So where were we? Just uh, the, so we're here. So he said, I'll read the ayah, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تصف ألسنتكم الكذبة هذا حلال وهذا حرام لتفتروا على الله الكذب 
إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ لَا يُفْلِهُونَ مَتَاءٌ قَلِيلٌ وَلَحُمْ أَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ So that is Surah Nahal 116 and 17. So I'm just going to go to that. So Allah mentions and say no concerning that which your tongues put forth falsely. This is lawful, halal, and this is forbidden, haram. So as to invent lies against Allah. Verily, those who invent lies against Allah will never prosper. And, and passing brief enjoyment will be theirs, but they will have a painful torment. So that is a severe warning uh, from the Quran, from Allah's speech. وَفِي سَحِيهَيْنِ وَغَيْرِهِمَا مِنْ حَدِيثِ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ وَغَيْرِهُ أَنَّ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ قَالَ مَنْ كَذَبَ عَلَيَّ مُتَأَمِّدًا فَلْيَتَبَوَّأْ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ so the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that, that was first in the Quran, now in the Sahihain, in the Bukhari Muslim, uh, a hadith that was maybe mentioned by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever lies upon me intentionally, let him take his seat in the hellfire. So how many times you got to be careful as well, when people are forwarding hadith, I know we like to uh, forward benefits, but we need to make sure that that hadith is Sahih, yeah? that it's not made up. So many times they attribute to the Prophet ﷺ something that is not correct. Yeah, so we need to be careful about that. وَحَذَّرَ النَّبِيَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مِنَ الْكَذِبِ فَقَالَ إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْكَذِبِ فَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ يَحْدِي إلَى الْفَجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفَجُورَ يَحْدِي إلَى النَّارِ وَلَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلُ يَكْذِبُ وَيَتَحَرَّ الْكَذِبِ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَذَّابٌ مُتَفَقٌّ عَلَيْهِ and it's agreed again Bukhari Muslim. So here again another the Prophet ﷺ warned us uh, from, um, from lying, whereby he said in a hadith, uh, let me bring that up, uh, that adhere, uh, adhere to the truth. So he, he mentioned the full hadith is what? Um, avoid falsehood. For falsehood leads to wickedness, and wickedness leads to hell. And if a man continues to speak with falsehood and makes falsehood his object, he will be recorded as a liar before Allah. Yeah. And then the Shaykh goes on to, to say, So that was against lying as well. So then the Shaykh said, And then he said, He stays away from, um, you know, backbiting. Uh, سواء ذكرة ذكرة ذكرته ذكرته بما يكره في هلقته كالأعرج والأعور والأعمى على سبيل العيب والذم أو بما يكره في خلقه كالأحمق وصفي والفاسق ونهوه سواء كان فيما تقول أو في فيما تقول Am lam yakun. So uh, we'll read that and then we'll, go, go, we'll, uh, we'll mention the hadith. So the Shaykh he mentions and uh, backbiting is to mention uh, your brother, is to mention your brother uh, in his absence. You know, to mention your brother what with what he hates in his absence. Whether, whether you mentioned uh, what you mentioned. Is is what he hates from his um, from his physical attributes, like you can say, or oh, he's limp, yeah, or oh, he's one-eyed, or oh, that he's blind. Not blaming blind that is a blind person. You're saying no, you're saying it in a mocking way. For example, in a in a way of mocking and belittling, belittling that person, or oh, that you mention in his uh, you know in his uh, characteristics, yeah. For example, you say, "Oh, he's, uh, you know, he's stupid. Yeah, he's, uh, he's imbecile, and he's, uh, he's an evil doer. Yeah, uh, and the like of that. And whether that be in him or is not in him. So whether that's true or not, some people say uh, they don't, they're ignorant of the fact that of backbiting. They say, no, no, brother, I'm telling you what is true in that person. It doesn't matter if it's true." So the Prophet Sallallahu here, we're going to find out what, what, what the ruling is that. لِأَنَّ النَّبِي Sallallahu Alaihi سُئِلَ عَنَ الْغِيبَ فَقَالَ هِيَ ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاقَ بِمَا يَكْرَهُ قِيلَ أَفَرَعَيْتَ إِنْ كَانَ فِي أَخِي مَا أَقُولُ قَالَ إِنْ كَانَ فِيهِ مَا تُقُولُ 
فقد اكتبته وان لم يكن فيه ما تقول فقد بحثته رواه مسلم so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentions here that he was asked the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked about uh, backbiting so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said is to mention your brother it could be in sister as well yeah so you can be mention your brother uh, with what he hates so it was said so what if we see what if it's the case that what we say is present in the brother meaning it's truth so even though he's absent we what we said about the brother is uh, present in him قال, so the prophet Sallam said if 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 what you say about him in his absence is uh, is uh, present in him, then indeed you have backbitten him. But if he's not present in him, then indeed you have slandered him. So either you're if you're lying, you've slandered him, and if you've tell, told the truth, then what you what you're doing, you're backbiting him. And that's mentioned in Sahih Muslim. وَلَقَدْ نَحَى اللَّهُ عَنَ الْغِيبَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَشَبَّهَا وَشَبَّهَا بِأَشْبَأَ صُورَةً شَبَّهَا مِنْ رَجُلٍ يَأْكُلُ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتَةً فَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَلَا يَقْتَبْ بَعْدُكُمْ بَعْدَ أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا مَيْتًا فكره فكرهتموه so سورة هجرات 12 so we just gonna mention that so and it, so that was in the hadith Sahih hadith and then uh, uh, I did uh, mention the Quran I know that I did Allah forbid uh, from uh, backbiting where Allah mentioned in the Quran he, he resembled it he resembled backbiting to the most ugliest you know form of uh, you know, uh, of displaying how how uh, give example. So the Allah resembled that to a man who eats the uh, the flesh of his dead brother. So imagine eating the flesh of your dead brother. How disgusting that is! You want to eat the flesh of a dead animal, never mind your brother. Yeah. So uh, Allah, the Most High, He mentioned. Uh, let's see. Um, he mentioned here. Um, And uh, back by not one another, would one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would hate it, yeah. So hate backbiting and, uh, and fear Allah. Where the Allah is the one who forgives and, uh, and accepts repentance, most merciful. So that's a complete ayah. So wa akbar al Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه مر ليلة المعراج بقوم لهم أفار من لحاس يخمشون بها وجوههم وصدورهم فقال ومن هؤلاء يا جبريل قال هؤلاء هؤلاء الذين يأكلون اللحوم لحوم الناس ويقعون في أعراضهم رواه أبو داود. so here also is mentioned in the hadith of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he went to Isra wa Miraj when he went travel the night journey and then he went to the heavens above the heavens and there he saw who were the, the inhabitants of Jannah and the inhabitants of Hellfire. And there he passed by a people. Yeah. And they had uh, nails of copper. And they were scratching their faces and the chest. So the Prophet وسلم, uh, asked Jibreel, who are these people? So Jibreel said, these are those who, who, eat, who eat the uh, flesh of the people. Being a backbite, and they and they uh, they basically uh, so and they transgress in uh, against the honor of the people, in the honor of the people. Yeah, and that was mentioned by Abu Dawood. Then the Sheikh he mentioned. So we said stay away from lying, from backbiting. Now he mentions وَهِيَ نَقْلُ كَلَامْ شَخْصٍ فِي شَخْصٍ إِلَيْهِ لِيُفْسِدَ بَيْنَهُمَا وَهِيَ مِنَ الْكَبَائِ لَلْذُنُوبِ So then the Shaykh mentions, and stay away from gossip, tail carrying. And that is what? Is relaying speech of a person to another person 
to uh, create, uh, you know, animosity between them. And he is from the greatest of sins. Yeah. So, قَالَ فِيهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ لَا يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ أَنَّمَّامِ The Prophet said in regarding to these people that the one who is a tail carrier, a gossip, he will not enter Jannah. And that is agreed in Sahih Bukhari Muslim. What a great uh, punishment that you will not enter par- paradise. SubhanAllah. So uh, that is uh, from the major sins. And fi, uh, wa fi sahihain min hadith ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma anna nabi sallam marra bi uh, kabrain faqala innahuma la, yu'adh, la yu'adhabani wa ma yu'adhabani fi kabir fi kabir in ayy fi amrin shaqin alayhima amma ahaduhuma fakana la yastanzihu min al-bawl wa amma al-akhiru fakana yamshi bin namima وَالنَّمِيمَ فَسَادٌ لِفَرْدٍ وَالْمُجْتَمَعِ وَالْمُجْتَمَعِ وَتَفْرِيقُ بَيْنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَإِلْقَاءُ لِأَدَاوَةٍ بَيْنَهُمْ And um, Allah the Most High says وَلَا تُطِئْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَحِينٍ هَمَّازٍ مَشَّائِمٍ بِنَمِيمٍ That's Surah Qalam فَمَنْ نَمَّ إِلَيْكَ نَمَّ فِيكَ فَحْذَرْهُ So here the Shaykh, he mentions that uh, in Sahihain, Bukhari Muslim as well, there's a hadith of Ibn Abbas, who is that? The cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abbas was the, cousin, uh, the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so he's the first cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah be pleased with them both. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by two graves. And this is a famous hadith, I'm sure you've come across it, where by um, they were being punished. The people, two inhabitants of the grave were Muslim, they were being punished. And they were being punished for something that you would not consider as great, as a big as a big sin. Yeah. So one of them, he could not keep himself clean when he was uh, urine, from urine. So he couldn't keep his clothes clean from urine. He was being punished in his grave. And the other, he used to spread gossip. He was a, 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 a tail carry between people. So they both were being punished. And the complete hadith is that the Prophet Sallallahu from his miracles and the, the, the uh, intercession that he was able to give was that he planted uh, some green uh, vegetation. Uh, I can't remember exactly the vegetation, but he, uh, and that he said that he planted that as an ease and an expiation for them. So uh, he, he did that. Um, you know, as an expiation for them. And this is, well, when a lot of the people of Ahl Bidah and the general people, they think that this is uh, some time of expiation and they do this for their deceased family members. They grow plants thinking it will ex- exceed, you know, expiate their uh, sins or the punishment. No, it won't. That was particularly for the Prophet Sallallahu What you can do is for the deceased and make dua for them. Make dua for them and be righteous offspring for them. Yeah. Um, so uh, then, uh, the, after that hadith, uh, the Sheikh he said, Namima is corruption uh, for, for, for the individual and for the society, and it's splitting between the Muslims, and it um, uh, puts animosity between the Muslims. And then Allah mention, then mentions the ayah from the Quran. Um, so you go read that, is. Uh, and, and O Muhammad, obey you not every uh, man, the one who swears much and is a liar or is worthless. So don't believe everyone that you hear. And uh, a slanderer going about with the calumnious. Yeah. So uh, so here Allah mentions that you know, don't believe them. Yeah. Each one, just like that. Yeah. So then the Sheikh he mentions. Uh, so whoever. Remember, whoever gossips to you, this is an important point to remember. Someone said, oh, someone said this about you, someone said that about you. Remember, whoever gossips to you, he will gossip uh, about you as well. So be warned. How true is that? Whoever comes to you, oh, someone saying this about you, he will be the same person who's telling the other person about you as well. So be warned. So remember, if someone says to you as well, it's important. Someone says to you, someone said this, Khalas, don't believe that person. Yeah, don't believe that person. 
Yeah. So take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah. So don't let it uh, because many people can be lying. Yeah. Unless there's evidence for that. So why why So we said staying away from lying, from backbiting, from gossiping. And now the Sheikh says stay away. The Sheikh says stay away from what deceiving. Rish. في جميع المعاملات من بيع وإجارة وصناعة ورحن وغير وغيرها. So here the Sheikh is saying that uh, you know stay, uh, stay away from deceiving, deception. Yeah. Uh, so so why why is that uh, in 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 all of sorry in all of our affairs in all of our affairs. From selling, yeah, and from leasing, uh, from uh, making stuff. So for all of our affairs, we st stay away uh, from uh, deceiving people. Yeah. So uh, so so cheating and uh, deceiving people. You know, transactions, trading, renting, manufacturing, mortgaging. Uh, then the Sheikh said, "Wa fi jami munasahati wa mushawirati fa inna lagish min kaba al zanu." So then he says, "Likewise, likewise, uh, you know, staying away from uh, being deceptive in advising people and counselling, and certainly cheating is uh, and uh, deceiving is one of the major sins." So uh, then the uh, وقد تبرأ النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من فاعله فقال من غشنا فليس منا. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم freed himself from the one who does that, deceives people and cheats people. He said, whoever deceives us is not from us. Yeah, that's a that's a great hadith showing that it's a big major sin. وفي لفظ and for another narration, من غشى فليس مني. So he said, whoever deceives deceives is not from me. So he said, not from us. And then here he says, not from me. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's mentioned in Say Muslim. Wal Rishu al Khadi'a wa Diya al Amana wa Fakdul Lithika bain al Nas wa Kulu Kasabin bin al Rish fa inu Kasbun Habithun Haramun la Yazidu sa Hibahu illa Bodan bin Allah. So here the Sheikh he mentions. Uh, the uh, uh, cheating is deception and violation of trust. It causes the people to not have reliance in the one in one another, and anything earned with uh, deception from the sea is evil and dis and is a disgusting earning. Yeah, filthy earning. It only causes his people, the person who was earned with deception, to become more uh, distant from Allah. Subhanallah. So how many people say, oh, no, no, this is good. And they'll put, they do this, especially in selling. They'll put the good dates on top. And we see that even in Saudi, when we go for buying dates, they'll put uh, dates on the, in the date market, they'll put good dates on the top, and they'll put the bad ones at the bottom so that when you scoop up, they'll come in there. Or when you're selling somewhere, you'll hide it. For example, you're selling a car. you got to be straight up. Brother, this is this is his fault. Even if he's a kafir, you got to be, oh, no, no, he's a kafir, will deceive him. That's the way the Jews used to do. The Jews used to say that riba, usury, is forbidden for them. They, what they would do is they'll charge other people. Now they, for, you know, all of them do it, even the Christians. They were forbidden for them as well. And there are many Muslims, subhanAllah, they fall into that as well. Allah protect us from that. Uh, because there's a, Allah, there's a war waged against you by Allah and His Messenger. The one who takes a mortgage, the one who takes loans, interest. So um, anyway, we should not deceive. Yeah, that's the main point. وَيَجْتَمُوا الْمَعَازِفِ وَهِيَ آلَاتَ اللَّحْوِ بِجَمِيعَ الْوَائِهَا كَالْعُودِ وَالْرَبَابَةِ وَالْقَانُونِ وَالْكَمَنْجَةِ وَالْبَيَانُ وَالْكَمَانِ وَغَيْرِهَا فَإِنَّ هَذِهِ هَرَامِ So here... Um, the Sheikh he mentions also to stay away from musical instruments. Yeah, so music. How many of the Muslims are affected by that? Allah Mustaan. Even now they've got halal nasheed. Yeah, <laughs> where well, they're busy anything that busy from the Quran. So these are not poetry. They're not a shi'r. 
that are permissible, these are taken away from the, uh, uh, you know, from uh, Quran. And many of them are on the tunes and on the melody of music, uh, music uh, uh, songs and stuff, you know. So we stay away from these, all of the instruments. And then he mentions like lutes and uh, those mention a few of these uh, are mentioned a few times: the violin, guitar, piano, and other than that, uh, these are haram. وَتَزْدَادُ تَحْرِيمًا وَإِثْمًا إِذَا اِقْتَرَنَتْ بِالْغِنَاءِ بِأَصْوَاتٍ جَمِيلًا وَأَغَانٍ مُثِيرًا So here, they said that and they increase in its uh, being haram, in its being forbidden, uh, when it's connected with singing, music instruments with singing, with beautiful sing, uh, voices, you know, and songs that have influence and effect on the people. Allah the Most High said, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِ اللَّحْوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُدِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ إِلْمٍ بِغَيْرِ إِلْمٍ وَيَتَّخِذَهَا خُزُوَا أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ أَذَابٌ مُحِيدٌ So that's Surah Al-Luqman. So here, if you read what Allah mentions, and said, and of mankind is he who purchases idle talk, a music singing, to mislead men from the path of Allah without knowledge, and takes it the path of, uh, of Allah, or the verses of the Quran by way of mockery. For such there will be a humiliating torment in the hellfire. So here the, the many scholars mention that this ayah means music. وَقَدْ صَحَّ عَنْ إِبْنْ مَسْعُودِ أَنَّهُ سُئِلَ عَنْ هَذِهِ الْآيَاتِ فَقَالَ وَاللَّهِ أَلَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا غَيْرُهُ هُوَ الْغِنَى وَصَحَّ أَيْدًا عَنْ إِبْنْ أَبَّاسِ وَإِبْنْ عُمَرْ وَذَقَرَهُ إِبْنْ كَثِيرٍ عَنْ جَابِرْ وَإِكْرَمَةَ وَصَعِيدِ إِبْنِ جُبَيْرْ وَمُجَاهِدْ وَقَالَ الْحَسَنُ نَزَلَتْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ فِي الْغِنَى وَالْمَزَامِيرِ وَقَدْ حَذَّرَ النَّبِي من المعازف وقرنها بالزنا فقال ليكونن من أمة الأقوام يستحل يستحلون الحرة الحرة والحريرة والخمر والمعازف رواه البخاري so here we'll stop there we we'll translate uh, so then the sheikh he mentions indeed is authenticated by Ibn Masood who was a companion that he was asked uh, about this ayah. So Ibn Mas'ud, they said that the most knowledgeable about the Quran was Ibn Mas'ud because he mentioned that we didn't learn 10 ayahs except, and we wouldn't move on to from them until we understood them, memorized them, and acted upon them. So Ibn Mas'ud was the most knowledgeable about the Quran and he was asked about this ayah and he said, by Allah, he swore by Allah there is, uh, uh, who there is no uh, deity or worthy worship yeah, except him. Yeah? Uh, this is music, yeah. This is music, meaning this, is, and it's also authenticated uh, on Ibn Abbas. And Ibn Abbas is the other person that was uh, the Prophet Sallam made dua for him for, to understand the Quran, and he is the one that we get a chain back uh, to understand the Quran from the, the uh, tafsir. So he is the one that Ibn Umar and Ibn Umar as well, another companion that they mentioned. Uh, also, Ibn Kathir, the the scholar of Tafsir, yeah, and we say uh, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, uh, from Jabir, from Ikrama, from Sa'id Ibn Jubair, and from Mujahid, Mujahid who was a, story, a student of Ibn uh, Ibn uh, Abbas, yeah, that he said uh, that Hassan said this uh, the verse this ayah was revealed in regards uh, to music, yeah. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned وَكَدْ حَذَّرَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مِنَ الْمَعَازِفِ وَقَرَنَهَا بِالزِّنَا So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned against uh, musical instruments and music and he, uh, you know, he compared it, uh, comp uh, connected it with uh, zina, yeah, with adultery. So he said um, that you, there will be from my own nation. So this is the prophecy, yeah? Because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew what's going to happen in the future. It shows how truthful he was. There will be from my ummah people who will make halal al-hir. And that is what, he's going to mention later on the sheikh, that is what? Adultery. They make halal adultery. And they make halal silk for men. And they make halal alcohol. And they make halal music, musical instruments. And this is mentioned in Bukhari. 
So falhiru farj wal murad bihi al zina. So the Sheikh mentioned that hir is the private parts and the meaning by it is adultery. Wa mana yastahiluna and the meaning of making it permissible, making it halal, ay yafaluna fi'l al mustahil laha bidun al mubalati. So that what means by making it halal, uh, making it permissible, it doesn't mean or oh, saying it's halal, rather it means uh, cutting it out as if it's uh, halal. So they practice it as it's halal without, you know, without caring. And that's what it means. And how many from the Muslims carry this out, carry out zina without care from the youth, from the elderly as well. Allah musta'an. وَقَدْ وَقَعَ هَذَا فِي زَمَنِنَا So this is the Shaykh, he's talking about 30-40 years ago. He said, indeed, this is happening in our time. What about our time now? Even more so. فَكَانَ مِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَسْتَعْمَلُ هَذِهِ الْمَعَازِفِ أَوْ يَسْتَعْمِعُهَا كَأَنَّهَا شَيْءٌ حَلَالٌ So how many people now, he said, that they take these musical instruments of music and use them as if they are halal. And so many people use that. Where they call it halal nasheed, they call it halal, you know, music, and they'll uh, even use it for introduction for Islamic talks, you know, even for uh, the introduction uh, to something that's a, the so called Islamic, yeah. <laughs> فيه آداء الإسلام بكيدهم للمسلمين في صد في صدهم في صدهم عن ذكر الله ومحام دينهم ودنياهم. So here the, the, the Sheikh mentions that this is what the enemies of Allah have been successful in preventing, uh, you know, hindering the Muslims in the mentioning of Allah and uh, you know and uh, giving importance to their religion and their you know in their life. And they're being uh, taken away from that by focusing on music. وَأَصْبَحَ كَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ يَسْتَمِعُونَ إِلَى ذَلِكَ أَكْثَرَ مِمَّا يَسْتَمِعُونَ إِلَى الْكِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ وَالْأَحَادِيثِ وَكَلَامِ أَهْلِ الْإِلْمِ الْمُتَدَمِّ 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 لِبِيَانِ أَحْكَامِ الشَّرِيَّةِ وَوَهِكَمِهَا. So he said, uh, and the people have become uh, many people have become uh, more uh, used to listening to uh, these music instruments and music uh, more than uh, they listen to the Quran and Hadith and the speech of the people of knowledge uh, and we, of, uh, of that which co contains uh, uh, rulings of the Sharia and the wisdom yeah? uh, so uh, the wisdom of the Sharia they don't listen to any of that they're too busy with music so فَحْذَرُوا أَيُّهَا muslimun نواقذ <تصفيق> وقال جابر رضي الله عنه إذا صمت فل فليصم سمعك وبصرك ولسانك عن الكذب والمحارم ودع عنك أذى الجار ويكون عليك وقار وسكينة ولا يكون يوم صومك ويوم فطرك سواء سواء صحيح the Sheikh he goes on to mention uh, here that uh, why do we go stop here? So yeah, here the Sheikh he mentions. Therefore, be cautious, O Muslims, of those things which uh, nullify the fast or decrease the fast. Yeah. Uh, so um, so the, those who nullify the fast or those are decrease the fast. So protect your fast from uh, from false statements. Yeah. So the Prophet said in Hadith, whoever did not stay away from false statements uh, and acting with it, then Allah is not need of him leaving his food and drink. Yeah. And it's mentioned um, in Bukhari that, that um, so his food and drink is uh, it's not uh, Allah doesn't need you to leave your food and drink. You know, rather you implement all of the fast. And then Jabir mentioned, may Allah be pleased with him. Uh, if you fast, 
then fast uh, make your uh, your hearing fast meaning don't hear evil make your you know sight fast meaning don't look at evil and make it tongue fast from uh, lying and from uh, haram yeah so uh, so your uh, you don't you don't speak with haram yeah uh, and leave harming your uh, and stay away from uh, harming and leave from having uh, your neighbors don't harm your neighbors yeah and uh, and then he mentioned uh, stay away from harming your neighbors and let tranquility and dignity overshadow you and the days in which and this is and this is a really important thing uh, the days in which you fast shouldn't be like the day days in which you don't fast like your any other days so if you have that your day I outside of Ramadan in and the day inside Ramadan are the same then you know that you have deficiency in your fasting and we, so you have deficiency in your fasting subhanallah uh, this is keeps shifting so I do apologize about this so then the sheikh he finishes we just make the dua uh, so he mentions oh Allah uh, preserve our religion for us and restrain us and uh, our limbs from falling into war uh, angers you forgive us uh, our parents and all the Muslims with your mercy for verily uh, you are most beautiful. may peace and blessings of Allah be upon the Prophet Sallallahu his family members his companions and whoever follows his footsteps until the day of judgment so inshallah with that I'll uh, finish subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk inshallah tomorrow continue with brother uh, Shaib so inshallah we'll finish that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.